Thank you for coming today um, to talk about the issue of human trafficking in general and specifically about the Robert, Robert Hawkins case, um, which we just heard in court uh, for his sentencing after his guilty verdict. I'm joined today by Assistant, by Senior Deputy District Attorney Laura Mullen, who is the, was the first chief of the office's Human Trafficking Unit and the lead prosecutor on the Robert Hawkins case. And other members of the team are here with us. Um, also, Commander Paul Jimenez, who is the commander of the Denver Police Department's Strategic Investigations Unit at Bureau, and Mark McCulloch, the special agent in charge of the FBI's Denver Division. So I appreciate all of them joining us to talk about this issue. Human trafficking has been an important issue um, to me most of my professional career. Um, handling a human trafficking case back many years ago when I was a deputy DA in the trenches when I first became aware of this uh, heinous crime. And then as a legislator when I was able to pass legislation addressing human trafficking. Um, and then, of course, in 2017, when I became Denver's district attorney. One of my major initiatives as a DA was to establish a human trafficking unit, uh, which now consists of two prosecutors, two investigators, a victim advocate, a grant manager, and a task force director. So I'm very proud of the work that this unit has done, um, which I have to say, Laura Mullen really started and got up and running um, so successfully. It's, it's been a great experience watching that unit grow. Human trafficking is a planned and predatory crime in which traffickers prey on the vulnerable, as we heard about so much, so eloquently today in the courtroom. It, is, it has no place in a civilized society and we must do everything we can to identify and prosecute those who commit this crime and prey on the vulnerable victims in our society and make money off of their backs. We are also supporting, we are also providing support and justice for the victims of this crime, many of whom you heard about today. I'm hoping that today's sentence will send the message that human trafficking will not be tolerated in this community and it will be prosecuted aggressively. Robert Hawkins, like most human traffickers, showed no regard for anyone but himself, took advantage of six extremely vulnerable victims, and now he will pay a significant price for his crimes. I personally want to thank the prosecutors and investigators in my office and our victim advocate, as well as the detectives with the Denver Police Department for their um, work on this case and the agents and members of the FBI staff whose collaborative work helped bring this case to fruition and resulted in today's sentence. I also want to acknowledge the courageous victims who came forward throughout this trial throughout this whole process, which by the way has been going on for many years, and were willing to tell their stories to the public and testify against Mr. Hawkins. It takes a lot of courage, it takes a lot of um, ability to deal with a trauma in a public way. I hope today's sentence gives them some measure of comfort in knowing that Robert Hawkins will never be able to commit these terrible crimes again. I'd now like to introduce Laura Mullen, who will provide more details about the case, and then you will hear from Commander Jimenez and Special Agents in Charge McCulloch, who will then say a few words, and we will be happy to take some questions. Thank you. Thank you all for coming out this afternoon to um, address this case and shine a light on the outcome of our verdicts and our sentencing that happened this afternoon. Um, I can't stress enough how this case would have never come to be and we'd never have this historic sentencing that we received today without a lot of faith both from Beth McCann at the DA's office as well as the Denver Police Department to set up human trafficking units when we had no human trafficking cases um, in an era of being asked to do more with less. That was 
incredibly brave and, and frankly, um, a challenge to devote personnel and people to starting to investigate and looking for human trafficking victims in the community, building relationships with our partners in the community who see um, these survivors and who work with them day in and day out. And it's because of the development of both of our joint units and then um, working together that we were able to sustain this case that started back in 2019. Um, this case began with a singular adult survivor who came forward to one of our community partners and was worked by Detective Brandy Thomas at the Denver Police Department. She believed in her. Um, she did everything she could to develop a case even though that survivor had um, exited that situation with Robert Hawkins many years prior. And then we had a challenging time trying to build that case. But that was on our radar. And then um, what we know about human traffickers is that where they can exploit one person, then they'll find two, three, four, five more. And so during the time in between when that victim had left Mr. Hawkins, he had continued this practice. And he had continued to prey on both adult women as well as juveniles. And so we then um, learned of a separate investigation that was started and completed by the FBI and investigator Tillery. Um, kind of in partnership with Sergeant Shanna Michael from the Denver Police Department, and they built an amazing case involving two juvenile victims. And ultimately, what we realized is that these all kind of co-related. In the process of building that case and starting to really look into what Robert Hawkins was doing over the years, we then identified another victim who had been involved in an incident where Robert Hawkins had, in fact, shot a sex buyer in the leg in his vehicle after he dropped her off on Colfax Avenue. And at the time that case came in, we didn't realize that human trafficking was happening. And so we then um, were able to reach out and provide services to her and have her be part of the case, and then identified two additional adult women for a total of seven victims. Um, this case has been a long journey. It's taken so many years since originally in 2019 when it started, um, and I am so impressed with the bravery um, of the victims involved in this case and their ability to hang in there with us during continuances and pauses in the case. They showed up for trial. They all endured hours of cross-examination and, frankly, accusations that they were liars, that they deserved this, that they liked it. Um, and they walked out of that courtroom with their heads held high. And importantly, the jury believed them and resoundingly believed them, which is what brought us to this sentencing today. Um, this really has been a Herculean team effort. We've had so many community partners for those who were in the courtroom. We were at capacity. We couldn't even fit everyone who wanted to be part of the sentencing today because we've had community-based advocates um, from Silence to Save. Janelle Goodrich has virtually supported all of these victims throughout this this process and ensured that they felt heard, supported. Um, we had partners who helped all of these victims come into court and feel like they were confident, do their hair, their makeup, help them get clothing so that they came into court feeling empowered. And this has been just the collective lift of so many people, both on our team um, at the DA's office and the police department and with the FBI and all of our community partners. And so we're really proud and grateful for this incredible outcome and receiving um, a sentence of this magnitude. I think it really sends a message that this is not a crime that you can do um, and just walk away with a light sentence or a slap on the wrist and that um, law enforcement sees you and that we're paying attention and we're going to hold you accountable to the fullest extent that we can. Thank you. And I'm going to pass it off to Commander. Oh, yeah. You bet. So it's four adult women, okay. two juvenile girls. One was an adult by the time of trial, but she was a juvenile at the time of the case, and one adult male victim for a total of seven victims. Um, and then 448 years? 448 years. And is that um, historical, the longest sentence now in the US history? We believe it is. Don't quote me on that. But as I understand it, the record here in Colorado was 401 after a sentence adjustment in Arapahoe County. And so we do believe this is the longest sentence in the nation's history for human trafficking. Right, it's really confusing. So 448 is actually his sentence. That will be the, the, the term that he serves, um, minus good time and earned time. But encompassed in that 448 is another 200 plus years that was sentenced concurrently. So 448 is the real number. Um, that will be his sentence on the DOE, DOC inmate site.
Yeah. Any other questions? Commander Jimenez. Sure. Thanks. Thanks, Laura. Good afternoon and thank you for joining us today on what is a bittersweet occasion. First, I'd like to acknowledge the tremendous amount of bravery that was displayed by the victims, which I'd like to call survivors in this case. Without them, we could not have moved forward and seen this case to its successful and obvious conclusion. Second, I would like to acknowledge and thank the prosecution team, the Denver police detectives, our human trafficking service providers for what is a tremendous amount of effort displayed in investigating and providing service to the individuals in this case. Next, I would like to say as a warning to those who would be participating in this type of activity, we as a law enforcement team collectively will do everything we can in our power to investigate and prosecute these cases and hold you accountable. And I think this case is a, a display of that effort and what will happen if you are involved in this type of activity. Lastly, I'd like to make a community call to action. If you are the victim or you know somebody who's involved as a victim in one of these cases, please reach out to one of our service providers or authorities to make sure that we can follow up and investigate these type of cases. Thank you. Good afternoon. In the courtroom today, we heard heart-wrenching impact statements from the survivors of this defendant's unimaginable actions. They use words like pain, evil, sadistic, heartless, and monster. Sex trafficking causes immeasurable harm to some of the most vulnerable members of our society. Victims can be of any age, race, ethnicity, or socioeconomic class. Traffickers operate in plain sight, yet can go undetected for months or even years while they continue to endanger, exploit, and traumatize their victims. While this crime is intentionally kept hidden by those who profit from it, make no mistake, human trafficking is very real and is happening here in Colorado. Traffickers promise their victims that they will receive care and support when that couldn't be further from the truth. Their sole focus is exploiting the victims for their own personal gain, and they accomplish this by manipulating their victims through various methods of physical and psychological control. No human being should ever be lured into servitude, exploited, and forced to live in fear. But that is exactly what happened here, and it happened over and over. Amidst the horror of the defendant's actions, the perseverance shown by the survivors is remarkable. As we heard directly from them, standing up to him and testifying is powerful. And part of healing is justice. Well, today we saw justice win. Thank you to everyone who worked so tirelessly to bring us to this moment. It takes a determined and empathetic team to support a human trafficking case. And it could not have been done without the partnerships of the investigators, the victim specialists, the prosecutors, and our victim service providers, such as from Silence to Save. I want to especially thank District Attorney Beth McCann and the prosecution team for taking this case. Your commitment to protecting the citizens of Denver and your trauma-informed approach to this prosecution safeguarded the rights of the survivors and ensured the defendant was held accountable to the fullest extent of the law, preventing countless acts of further victimization. And thank you most of all to the strong and courageous women that came forward. The FBI's commitment to combating the threat of human trafficking will not waver, and we will continue to send our message that these actions will not be tolerated. FBI Denver's Child Exploitation and Human Trafficking Task Force will aggressively pursue the criminals responsible for these heinous acts. We have and will always help survivors get to a safe place and receive support. I want to encourage continued vigilance, cooperation, and reporting from the public to help identify victims and bring perpetrators to justice. Punishments like the one handed down today let traffickers know that their crimes will not stand without severe consequences. And outcomes like this are not possible without help from the community. If you or someone you know is under the control of a trafficker, please visit thisishumantrafficking.com or call Colorado's Human Trafficking Hotline at 866-455-5075. Thank you. Thank you. And um, I just want to take a moment and acknowledge the other 
members of the team who prosecuted this case, Deputy Senior Deputy District Attorney Ashley Morgan and Audrey Keene, our victim advocate, who was throughout this case um, an, a constant presence. And we really appreciate, I very much appreciate the work that this team did to bring this case to conclusion. So at this point, we'll take any questions, if there are any other questions. Okay. It's thought to be the highest in the country. Um, 448 years though, what does that mean? What does it mean behind just the numbers of that sentence? Well, what do you mean, what does it mean? <laughs> Ah. Well, I think it's, a, again, an indication of the seriousness of the case and, you know, hearing the judge who actually heard the trial and heard the statements and testimony of the survivors um, render that high a sentence uh, was very emotionally impactful. And I think for the survivors, I think some of them talked about feeling a sense of freedom now and relief that they know this man will not be out in the community able to see them again, but also not able to um, do this kind of behavior with anyone else. So I think it's a real relief and sense of accomplishment for them. How common of a crime is human trafficking in So. I might let Laura mention, talk about that, but I will just say that I think it's here more than we realize. Um, we could have many more people in our unit if we had the, the ability to do that um, because it, it's, um, it's there and not seen so much, and it takes a lot of resources. These are hard cases. They take a lot of time, a lot of energy um, to prosecute. But Laura, do you want to say anything more about that? What I, what I would say in response to that is um, prior to the establishment of our unit, both at the DA's office and the police department, we didn't have filed human trafficking cases, but we knew that they were happening. They don't come in in the traditional sense. People don't pick up the phone and call 911 and say, I'm a victim of human trafficking, right? That doesn't happen. And so we don't see these crimes until we have professionals who are um, invested and trained to identify and then serve survivors of trafficking. It, that starts on the community-based side, right, the victim advocacy side. Um, and, and in the law enforcement side, we were, frankly, only seeing them if they were coming forward as a victim of other types of crimes. Um, and then maybe we would start to understand the full picture. I would say, just in the short time that we've had our unit, um, we can be as busy as we have capacity for. And I know that I can speak for the police department that that's the same. Um, that. We see it everywhere. The more you know, the more that you're trained to identify this crime, the more that we start to detect it, um, both in filed cases that may say look like a sex assault or a domestic violence but have a lot more to them, um, as well as just interactions with people in the public. The more that um, we on the law enforcement side start to understand indicators, the more we recognize that it is very prevalent and unfortunately where there are vulnerable people, there will always be human trafficking. Ashley, and Ashley Morgan actually currently is the prosecutor in the unit who has a better sense of kind of what is happening currently in the unit. So I'll pass it off to her to talk a little bit about what she's seeing. So the statistics show that only 8% of human trafficking charges are ever brought forth to law enforcement and 14% ever even come to light. So we're missing over 80% of human trafficking that's happening. And if you were to look at that 14% that does get reported, Oftentimes, you can't even bring a case all the way to the end. Um, many of the victims and survivors of human trafficking have really endured a lot, and it can be incredibly difficult, as we saw in this case, to come forward and do that. Um, we see trafficking in all different types of forms. Um, we have an understanding of what that looks like maybe from movies, and that isn't necessarily the truth about what human trafficking really is without working with people like our community service providers who are able to create relationships with people, create trust, help them gain the stability to separate themselves from the traffickers, we are not able to pursue these cases. So 
Um, I, I appreciate uh, Laura Mullen kind of handing this over. Um, this team, everyone here, works together every single day to just try to take a, a little kernel and turn it into a, a case to get justice for our victims. But unfortunately, that doesn't happen as much as it should. And you know, I, I will join in. And if if people are being trafficked, please come forward. We will do everything we can to keep you safe, to do it in the way that works for you. Um, but we are we are working tirelessly to try to eradicate this crime that is hiding right in front of our eyes. Thank you, Ashley. Any other questions? All right. Well, thank you all so much for coming and. Um, Thank you for covering this important story.